What's up guys? My name's Josh. I'm one of the ambassadors for the Running Bear store in Alderley Edge, which is about 10 miles behind us in Cheshire. I'm sat here on Bosley Cloud, which is one of my local trail running routes. I live just behind the corner of that peak in Congleton. I'm a long distance runner and I'll be answering a few questions that the Running Bear team have put together for me. Uh, what's working for me in training, the type of uh, diet which I've adopted and favourite bits of kit. Hope there's some stuff in there that's of use to you. I'll put the questions at the bottom of the screen and let's go. So I have a pretty balanced diet. I eat meat products, I eat fish products, I'll go full veggie a couple of days during the week. I tend to focus a lot more on when I'm eating than what I'm eating. So for a very easy training session, I'll go into the session fasted. Um, I know that my body is going to be working in a very low heart rate zone, 120 to 140 beats per minute, and that fats is the preferred energy source for the body at very low heart rates. And so I'll encourage that process to become more and more efficient by ramping up the fat intake, keeping the protein intake still nice and high so that there's a substrate to aid muscle repair after the workout. But I'll drop back on the carbohydrate intake for the purposes of that session because we don't need it for the higher gears. Now, if I have a tough session the next day, uh, if I'm in the mountains, if I'm on the track, if I'm doing a fartlet session on the road, I know that I absolutely need carbohydrates in the form of glycogen to be broken down into energy to sustain those very high heart rate, high gears. And so I'll ramp up the carbohydrate for that day. Uh, I'll still keep the protein intake nice and high, but I'll drop back slightly on the fat intake. So for me, it's all about using the type of substrate that you want to encourage uh, using for uh, a targeted workout. Uh, so I've been taking on OTE's uh, soya protein mix, which has uh, 25 grams of protein, which is the top end of what your body can absorb in a single sitting. And then very recently I've been getting used to uh, taking on their super carbs, which has uh, 80 grams of carbohydrate uh, in an energy drink. Uh, I've got a race coming up in uh, the end of September if it goes ahead uh, where it's a lap system over a hundred kilometers so I need to get really really comfortable and happy uh, with a carbohydrate powder that can provide me with the 60 to 80 grams which I need to replenish my stores every hour but isn't so overwhelming on the gut that I can't tolerate it. Uh, so I had a complete life overhaul about four or five years ago, decided I was going to move alone to the Lake District and um, I was about 100 miles uh, from anybody that I knew and uh, just started uh, running, getting lost in the mountains in my little short shorts and a Fruit of the Loom jumper and um, completely out of my depth but absolutely loved it and um, uh, it changed me for the better. So when I moved back from the Lake District uh, I started focusing more on my speed and um, uh, coach took me on and um, yeah the the sport just completely floors me and makes me feel like um, I'm in the right place so the first bit of advice uh, which I was given is run your slow runs really really slow so that you can afford to run your fast runs uh, really really fast and if you're anything like me the difficult bit has been it concentrating on running those slow runs really slow uh, the rest will follow and then the second bit of advice which I like is tightness is weakness so running is all about consistency and consistency is getting the maintenance right so doing the rolling doing the stretching uh, every single day is the stuff that's gonna ensure that your body is resilient enough and supple enough to sustain the type of workouts that you want to do so regularly uh, so my favourite running accessory is probably these um, Oakley sunglasses that I have just to keep my hair back and out my face um, and a good pair of short shorts and a pack. I, I don't need very many clothes, uh, 15 degrees and all the clothes come off, that's me. Uh, so I love all sports, uh, I'm particularly into squash, uh, tennis and racket sports. I'm the youngest of two older brothers so I've always been fighting for survival, doing things that are competitive. So I'll watch any sport but I genuinely only have enough time uh, for running. I'm not sure I could keep Sophia if I took on another sport. Uh, outside of that, uh, with regards to injuries, I. I've had all sorts of injuries over the years, nothing that's taken me away from training for too long, but I think that's just because I tend to uh, I tend to really zero in 
the moment that I feel something coming on that could turn into an injury and just take myself away from running immediately. And usually that's just a connective tissue issue. So I'll get like a funny quad strain and it turns out a couple of days later that the mus the body just needed to rest for a couple of days. It's not a real physical injury. It's just the body's way of taking me away from training and resting for a couple of days because it knows that the brain won't let it do it. So a typical training week for me is about 85 to 100 miles. Uh, I'll run double run days, most Mondays to Fridays, and then some longer runs at the weekend when I have a little bit more time. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'll have a key session as one of those two workouts. So that'll be either a speed session on the track or maybe a fartlet session on the road or some hill sprints uh, at Bosley Cloud or Macclesfield Forest. Uh, once every fortnight, I'll take a rest day and we'll basically uh, work hard for three weeks and then have one week down where I'll consolidate some of those efforts done on the three weeks prior. Uh, so the day before a race, I'll be taking on something that's really light and palatable. So maybe a piece of fish with some vegetables and a few different types of carbs just because we can. Uh, so some pasta, potatoes and some bread and butter. So I meditate every morning and that just allows me to drop a little bit lower and have a look at the way in which I'm responding to the things that I'm experiencing or the thoughts that I'm having. And that really helps me when I'm doing uh, very long workouts or uh, very short painful workouts at speed because you see that the pain you're experiencing in that moment when you have the blinkers on and can't see anything outside of that pain is that it's short-term avoidance of discomfort. You wanna get out of that moment at all costs. But the reality is that if you give in to that and you finish the workout prematurely, then you're dealing with the long-term pain associated with the regret of not having completed it. And which of those is worse? The, the long-term regret lasts for longer, so you could argue that it is. Um, worse but one of the things that i've realized over a long enough period of time is you get better and better at dealing with that short-term pain and so i kind of smirk now there's a part of me that knows that i have enough self-control that i identify with being somebody that deals with that short-term pain well and so when i'm experiencing it i become the person that knows he's good at self-control, that smirks at the part of the brain that is crying out in pain. And that's what makes it easy for me to uh, easier for me to overcome it. Yeah, plenty of mistakes. Um, a big one was, um, it's usually toilet errors, you know, race to the stones in 2016. I remember uh, this was a 30 mile race, so 50K. I remember deciding that I, for somebody that didn't drink coffee that I was gonna drink coffee 23 miles into a race um, I spent the next half hour in the bush uh, I seem to enjoy the races more the longer they are um, so I'm just looking to run further and further um, we're a little bit pigeonholed with the races that are available to us at the moment I was running the Snowdon Mountain Marathon uh, which was postponed until October, but that got cancelled yesterday. So uh, I'm now talking to my coach about uh, doing a 100 kilometer uh, flat uh, road um, uh, race, which is basically a 3.5 kilometer loop 28 times uh, at, the end of, at the end of September. So um, I'm pretty excited about that. That sounds mental. Uh, fortunate enough to have Bosley Cloud just about four miles in that direction. Um, which is a local uh, mountain on the southeast fringe of the Peak District. Uh, you can head a little bit further north from here, about 15 miles, and you've got Macclesfield Forest where you, you, you could get lost in there all day. You could quite happily run 20 miles and not uh, cover the same trail twice. So I'm fortunate to be able to do such good quality trail runs so close to home, but uh, when I can, um, I like to go over to the Peak District, the Lake District, and, and train in Snowdonia. The Great Wall of China Marathon was my 
favourite race that I've done today, just because it was the whole experience. I went out to Beijing for a week before uh, alone and met, you know, a bunch of people that we shared a coach with. There was about 25 other internationals uh, from America, Canada and all around Europe. And, you know, we got to know each other. We stayed in the same hotel. We travelled around Beijing and saw all the sights. And then at the end of uh, the, the 10 days, we ran the... Uh, the Great Wall of China Marathon, which is just the most picturesque race. Um, uh, you scale five and a half thousand uh, steps that are about this big, and it's just the most beautiful place in the world. And that's one of the races I'm most proud of. Yeah, so heart rate uh, training for me is really, really important. Uh, the first thing is um, it gives you a live feed of what's happening in the internal world. And when you're running uphill or on terrain that you've never run on before, uh, it's really difficult to gauge exactly how hard you should be working. And so being able to constantly monitor your heart rate allows you to make more accurate predictions about how long you can sustain the pace that you're running at for. Uh, the second piece is um, I'm constantly checking each morning exactly how I'm recovering from the training the night before. And the best way to do that is to um, get comfortable with what your resting heart rate should be and if you notice that it's five or ten beats per minute more than it should be you know that you need to take it easy for the next 24 hours to allow your body to fully rest and recuperate and then the third piece is you have two metabolic systems in the body you have the aerobic system which is core fat metabolism when you have oxygen at present and then your anaerobic system which is core carbohydrate or glycogen metabolism when you don't have any oxygen present and I imagine those two systems as overlapping in the center and you can look at the aerobic system which let's say is between 120 to 130 beats per minute that's when you're optimally using fats as efficiently as possible as your energy source to sustain the training or for anaerobic training you know, optimally say at 160 to 170 beats per minute utilizing glycogen as your primary energy source what you want to do is try and nail bang on in the center of those circles so when i say i like to try and train really really easy um that's i want to encourage the body to become as efficient as possible at metabolizing fats that's the purpose of that training session then when I'm training very hard, say on a track run, I want to encourage my VO2 max system. I want to encourage the body to become as efficient as possible at metabolizing glycogen or carbohydrates as its energy source. And what I found was the mistake I made at the start when I was running for the first couple of years, as I spent mostly all of my time running in the overlap between those two circles, which was about 150 to 160 beats per minute. I knew I could sustain that pace for about an hour, but actual, in actual fact, I wasn't growing and developing at the rate that I would have had I worked in the center of either my aerobic or anaerobic system. It's kind of no man's land. It's really comfortable to spend all of your time there, but it doesn't actually um, develop you, uh, or at least me as a runner, as quickly as when I started to focus on those two areas individually. Ooh, a thousand percent trail.